It's the way of the cross, and it's one of Lent's most solemn practices. Join us as we explore. Hello, with this week's feature story, I am Tessa Habet. Our feature story is brought to you by Enrique Martinez and Sons. Enrique Martinez and Sons, your trusted source for cooling automotive. Belize is known to have high temperatures for the most part of the year, so why not buy an LG inverter air conditioner that can guarantee you 70% energy saving? It is without a doubt the cool way to beat the heat. Drive in or call us at 223-0490 or WhatsApp us at 606-4154. Cross, also known as the Way of the Cross or Via Crucis, is a 14-step Catholic devotion that commemorates Jesus' Passion, which took place on Good Friday. We have in the church a very diverse uh, mix of people, and particular to this mix is the so-called popular devotion that characterizes our people. Right? stations of the cross. It's very important to see what the Catechism of the Church tells us about uh, these various forms of popular piety. In paragraph 1679, it says the Christian life is nourished by various forms of popular piety rooted in the different cultures. While carefully clarifying them in the light of faith, the Church fosters the forms of popular piety that express an evangelical instinct and a human wisdom and that enrich Christian life. The 14 devotions or stations focus on specific events of his last day, beginning with him being condemned to death. The stations are commonly used as a mini pilgrimage as those practicing the devotion move from station to station. So I became interested in it when, as a, at a very young age, I saw the, the people who were doing it. My mom, my mom used to take me out on Good Friday so that we can witness the stations of the cross. And she would ask us to meditate on it. We would question her mom, why do you bring us here? Why do we need to see this? We, you, have a, you have a movie. It's like, son. And let's support let's support what the church is doing and let's try to learn and get a better picture and sense and understanding of what our Lord Jesus Christ went through in his last hours and in his last steps he took on earth. The Via Crucis has been very impactful in my life uh, from day one. I saw what the actors were trying to portray and it gave me a better glimpse and understanding of what our Lord Jesus Christ went through as he took his last steps on earth and gave his life up for us and uh, in, in essence it has showed me and taught me that we must be always willing to give up our lives for others to service in particular because that's what our Lord Jesus Christ instilled on us and called us to do to serve and be missionaries and spread the gospel so the Via Crucis allows me to meditate in everything that I do the, that every action with every action that I take it, it uh, impacts the lives of others and it keeps me growing spiritually every year, although it might be repetitive for, for me doing the Via Crucis, it, has, it helps me grow spiritually and I meditate more thoroughly and deeply in, the, in what the, each station encompasses. So the Via Crucis has, has and continues to work in, in, in me in, in, in particular echoes the words of sacrifice. Sacrifice for family in particular. Keeping my my faith up and going at all times. It helps me grow spiritually and calls me to service, to lay my life for others, not literally as how we would do in the Via Crucis, die on the cross, but be there to serve others, to be willing to put ourselves there to help others succeed and become better persons. 
spiritual in particular. Tradition holds that our Blessed Mother visited the scenes of our Lord's Passion daily. After Constantine legalized Christianity in the year 313 AD, this pathway was marked with its important stations. The marking of the stations caused many pilgrims from all around the world to travel to the stations to follow the way of the cross. In the 5th century, an interest developed in the church to reproduce the holy places in other areas so pilgrims who could not actually travel to the Holy Land could do so in a devotional, spiritual way in their hearts. The preparation starts as of November, of, uh, of last of November, leading into Holy Week. So we have a couple of months of preparation and we normally put out a call through Facebook or to the church bulletin, calling for, for people to join the, the group to portray the Via Crucis. And uh, it's optional for people to join. We, we hope that they, that it's a call that within them and uh, unfortunately, at times, the, 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 the young people don't respond to it. But we go about and we, I speak to the young men and women who might see potential in, and of course, to those who have participated in the past. So we start recruiting since November, and uh, I print, get the copies of the script, hand it over to them, give them some time to read it. I, I ask them to please read the scriptures, especially the Gospels so that they can better visualize what our Lord Jesus Christ went through. And thereafter, I meet with them and we do, do the discussions and the, the expectations of what I have and, of course, what the parish expects. Uh, the, the, past, the lead pastor normally joins us in our first meeting and he as well echoes his sentiments and his, his gratefulness for the participation of the young people which is later on followed with a retreat, I mean retreat in the process. They participate in a retreat in which we try to work on that spiritual formation. I tend to encourage the young people to please try their best to honor the, the, honor the, the Sabbath, to participate in Mass as much as possible, especially given that they are putting their time, effort, and life into this reenactment in which we want to touch the lives of people so that they can get a glimpse, like I said, of what transpired 2,000 years ago. And uh, we encourage them to, to pray because we know that this is a time in particular when you're about to do something that will spread the word of God, the sacrifice God did, the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. So it's a time for them to meditate because the, the evil is always around and there will be many trials and tribulations that you will start to face. This is a time that we're trying to simply portray, to, to communicate to the people, to get into, to tap into those emotions that will allow them to feel and see what our Lord Jesus Christ went through. So in all that process, it's the same group that um, gathers with me, volunteers, and we prepare all the costumes. Uh, some have, al have already been left behind by the past groups, and we invest some money, we, we raise funds to try to make new costumes. And even the, the same actors, they take their time and skills and talent to make it better. So they, they paint the shields, we cut every, we do all the cutting, and even volunteers, other people volunteer to, to assist us. And I'm very grateful and thankful that God continues to answer our prayers in having people donate their time and talent to make this event a success. William Way described the manner in which a pilgrim followed the steps of Christ. At this point, every person who has chosen to follow Christ is personally brought into this journey. The first time I participated in this reenactment was in 2001 when I was 16 years old. At the time, I was a member of the youth group of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. I recall taking the role of Claudia Procla, the wife of Pontius Pilate. Uh, it was quite a challenge because the script was pretty long. Nevertheless, I studied the paper and I was able to memorize it in like a week or so. Yet what was more challenging was the fact that Claudia Procla was a type of person who portrayed a lot of emotions. She had a dream where she had seen how Jesus had been cruelly punished and 
judged wrongly. So she had this duty to convince Pontius Pilate to let him go. Because I was part of the introduction of the reenactment, I was able to witness every station of the Via Crucis. And that allowed me to meditate more of Christ's suffering on the cross, on the way to the cross, that is. This meditation led me to understand that it is only through suffering that we are able to love wholeheartedly. It is only through suffering that we can truly love one another because love is the giving of self and the giving of self requires suffering. To date, there are 14 traditional stations, but because of the intrinsic relationship between the passion and death of our Lord with His resurrection, several of the devotional booklets now include a 15th station which commemorates the resurrection. A plenary indulgence is granted for those who piously exercise the way of the cross, actually moving from station to station where they are legitimately erected and while meditating on the passion and death of our Lord. Those who are impeded from visiting a church may gain the same indulgence by piously reading and meditating on the passion and death of our Lord for one half hour. The continued importance of the stations in the devotional life of Catholics is attested by both Pope Paul VI, who approved a gospel-based version of the stations in 1975, and Pope John Paul II, who has also written his own version. Pope Pius XI argued that the stations of the cross was necessary so that Christians could understand the magnitude of what was endured providing some sort of compensation to be rendered for the injury. The path to spiritual paradise for Christians involves this aspect of compensation. It is through the acknowledging that the Stations of the Cross provides a needed element in the path to spiritual paradise for us as Christians. In the end, if we're going to talk about the Stations of the Cross, we are also talking about an extension of the liturgy and living that practice in communion with the understanding of the Eucharist.
And that's our feature story. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or view on Guadalupe Media Channel 76 on CCV or Channel 64 on CBC. You can also tune in on the radio in your car, home, or office at 101.9 FM. And please be sure to download the Guadalupe Media radio app from Google Play or the App Store. Our Blessed Mother, lead us to Jesus.